So in today's khutbah, we covered this concept of not making your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conditional upon the blessings that he gives to you, even though the Prophet sallallahu said to use the recognition of the blessings that he gives to you as a means of getting close to him and as a means of developing and growing your love of him. And SubhanAllah, when you look at the story of Nuh alayhi salam, you have a very interesting surah and plea, an actual story that is recorded very uniquely. Nuh alayhi salam is the first messenger of Allah. We know that from the Prophet Sallallahu hadith when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi mentions the people on the Day of Judgment going to Nuh Alayhi salam asking him for intercession and they say, you are the first Rasul, the first Messenger of Allah. Meaning Nuh Alayhi salam was the first one to come with a legislation and as Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhuma uh, narrates, Nuh Alayhi salam's people were the first people on earth to commit shirk. They were the first people to attribute gods beside Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, Nuh is unique in the sense that he has to deal with the first manifestation of shirk. And what was it? That they took these righteous men, Yahutha wa Ya'uqa, these people that were known, um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names in the Quran as righteous people and they turned them into gods. They made idols out of them after their death and they started to worship them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these were actual monotheists that were turned into symbols of polytheism after their death, which happens, right? It happens to uh, scholars at times, it happens to people that uh, even were prophets, right? Isa alayhi salam, classic example in that regard. So Allah records the story of Nuh alayhi salam, and I'm gonna connect it to the khutbah in a minute, but just some background. Nuh alayhi salam gives da'wah to his people for 950 years, 950 years. You imagine 950 years of da'wah, how many converts? Only a little more than 80. That means if you took 950 years and divided them by 80 converts, you imagine entire decades would pass where Nuh would not have a single person accept his message. On top of that, he wasn't just rejected in regards to his message, he was humiliated. He was mocked by his people. They called him disgusting. They would dust their phobes around him, you know, like get away from us. You smell bad. We're sick of you. We don't want to hear you. They mocked him and mocked him and mocked him. And Surah Nuh is very interesting in that it's a plea. It's a very emotional plea, SubhanAllah. It starts with Nuh alayhi salam saying, Ya Allah, I've tried everything with these people. And Nuh alayhi salam is making his case to Allah as to why his dua is going to end the way that it's going to end. Ya Allah, for 950 years, I've been calling on you to guide these people. I've been calling on you to forgive these people. I've been calling on you to spare these people. And the end of this surah is really, really, really um, alarming. Nuh, the prophet, prays against his people. He says, destroy each and every single one of them, because if you leave them on this earth, then their offspring will be just as corrupt as them, will be tainted by what they have introduced and innovated into this earth. Don't leave us, don't spare a single one of these people, right? Only spare the believers, but take away this batch of people that have introduced into the earth what was never introduced to it before. But before he gets there, what does he do? He builds his case. He says, Ya Allah, here's how this da'wah started. Here's how I started with them. I called upon them. I said to them, listen, I'm coming to you for you. I'm here for your sake. I've been sent to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm just telling you that if you believe, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ He will forgive you. وَيُؤَخِرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ So he first promises his people what? Goodness in the dunya or goodness in the hereafter? Goodness in this life or goodness in the hereafter? In the next. The next, this is what I want you to pay attention to. He starts off with what the call of a prophet should be. The call of a prophet is not that believe in me and the richness of this world will come to you. When the Prophet ﷺ started on Safa, the Prophet ﷺ did not stand on Safa and promise the people of Mecca, listen, if you believe in me, I'm going to turn Mecca into a world-class city. For the rest of the history of this world, 
Mecca will be the center of the world. People will come from all over. Pilgrims will come to it. They'll make tawaf around this Kaaba. Your names will be immortalized in this world because people will say, radiallahu anhu, may God be pleased with you every time they mention your name. I'm going to promise you everything. You imagine if Abu Jahl knew what Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu would be spoken about like in 2021. And if, if, if Abu Jahl in five or in 610 could see what the legacy of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has become, in 2021, Abu Jahl would say, sign me up. I'll take that. I'll be mentioned in, you know, by billions of people for the rest of the existence of the world. I'll be honored and people will pray for me and people will write books about me. I like that. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't call it, call it that. He started off with what? Belief in Allah. And I am promising you something of the hereafter. Why? Because again, that is the core of the message. The core of the message is that this is a message that orients you towards Al-Akhirah, orients you towards the hereafter, right? It's the opposite of the prosperity doctrine. When a preacher with his private jets stands up and says, believe, and one day you'll have what I have, right? And of course you'll have what I have by putting money into this, uh, into this bucket, and one day, right? And if, and if you're not getting it, that means that God doesn't like you like he likes me. Right? That's the prosperity doctrine, right? It's the opposite. The prophet started off with believe in God and when you meet him in the hereafter, what he has prepared for you will be good. Now here's the interesting thing. You then watch how this dua, this dua plays out of Nuh salam. Nuh salam says, all that earned me was ridicule. All that earned me was mockery. And Nuh salam says that when he, in, in the course of pleading with his people, why did they reject him? Because they wanted the power of this world, right? Now, subhanAllah, when the Prophet ﷺ was, was speaking to the different tribes, there was one tribe, very interesting tribe, that said to the Prophet ﷺ, when he was trying to find someone to host him, they said, okay, the, the chief of that tribe said, look, I see in this man some characteristics of a leader. Uh, something great is going to happen with him. He just has that, the Prophet ﷺ had an aura to him, that some greatness is going to come about. I don't necessarily believe in his message, but something is going to come about. So he said, listen, we'll believe in you as a tribe. We'll risk our alliances. But when God gives you victory, you have to sign off that entire victory to us. We inherit whatever kingdom comes to you. We inherit all of your military success. We inherit everything of this world that comes to you as a result of it. Prophet ﷺ said, الْأَرْضُ لِلَّهِ يُرِيثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ I can't make you that promise, it belongs to Allah. He gives it to whom He wills. And victory belongs to the God conscious. When the Ansar came from Medina, they said to the Prophet ﷺ, wait, what are we going to get in return? We're going to be attacked from all sides. Battles, I mean the most powerful empires in the world are going to try to wipe us off the face of the earth because we've taken you in. What do we get in return? The Prophet ﷺ did not say, Medina is going to be something else. I promise you, Medina will be this city of lights, city of, of barakah, city of blessing. No, he said Jannah. You'll get Jannah. And they said, Rabbi Halbayr. Okay, we'll take that. That's a good deal. We'll get Jannah. Now, Nuh alayhi salam, as he's pleading with his people, and his people are rejecting him in the name of what? We don't want to lose everything that we have in this world. He says, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِذْرًا وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا In the course of reasoning with his people, he says to them, if you believe and if you seek forgiveness of your Lord collectively, then the goodness of this world will come to you too. The rain will fall from the skies. Your gardens will be irrigated, your crops will grow, your lineage will be plentiful, your wealth will grow. Collectively and individually as a people, blessing is going to come to you. And that is the asal, that is the default, that when people believe and work righteousness, God blesses that nation with barakah, with blessing. Look at this ummah under Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala where they couldn't find anyone to take zakah because of the justice and the belief and the righteousness that was established amongst that nation. So individually people will have their, their tests, but collectively 
as a nation, you will be uplifted by your righteousness. There's a period of test and then there's upliftment and barakah. Mecca and Medina being two great case studies, right? Compare that to Thamud and Ad and, you know, and the list goes on and on. Despite all of their genius. Okay, so Nuh says, I came to them with that. And I said to them, look, he'll send you that too. That comes as well. And they still did what? They still turned away from him. And they mocked him and Nuh comes back to Allah once again. And Nuh says, Rabbi, my Lord, they rejected me again. And they followed those th- they followed these things that are just going to re- earn them the destruction of this life and the next. They're going down a path of destruction in this dunya and in the akhirah, for this life and for the hereafter. And subhanAllah, it ends with Nuh alayhi salam basically giving up on them and saying, 950 years is too much now. At this point, Ya Allah, take them away. At this point, take them away. And subhanAllah, to show you his sincerity. And by the way, I mean, let's be real here. We give up after a day or two, right? We give up after a few months when things get very tight. We go crazy with time. We are the generation of everything being hasty and instant, right? I mean, subhanAllah, look at the sabr of Nuh alayhi salam. Like we would have probably given up after a few months with that type of humiliation. I have the power to make dua to Allah and Allah will answer it. Ya Allah, 200 days has passed. Get rid of them. Nuh alayhi salam, 950 years had sabr with them, patience with them. And Nuh alayhi salam, even then he's saying, look, I'm not, this isn't like a, a dua because I had a really bad day. Nuh alayhi salam was not throwing a tantrum like a, like, like a normal human being would. Nuh alayhi salam was saying, Ya Allah, at this point, there's no good that's going to come out of these people. This group of people will produce no good whatsoever. So get rid of them and there needs to be, you know, and save those who will produce offspring that will continue what was continuous before this group of people came and introduced shirk and all of the ailments and injustices that come with that. So dear brothers and sisters, how does this connect to the khutbah and how does this connect to this idea? If you focus on the akhirah, what did the Prophet say? If your hem is dunya, if your concern is this life, is this world, this material world, you'll lose the hereafter and you'll lose this world. If your hem, if your concern is the hereafter, you'll gain the hereafter and the world will also work itself out. There will be blessing in what has been given to you and the world will also come to you. But that can't be your focus, that can't be your priority. That's also the nature, the priority, the language, the, 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 the equation that the prophets presented to their people that Allah establishes, uh, Allah establishes blessing amongst the people in this life by justice. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, Inna Allah al yuqimu al-dawlat al-adila wa in kanat kafira. Allah establishes a just nation even if it's a disbelieving nation. Wa yahdimu al-dawlat al-dhalima wa in kanat muslima. And Allah destroys a, an oppressive nation even if it's a Muslim nation. So there are things that bring about goodness in this life, but the believer focuses on the hereafter and then shapes their life in accordance with what they want to see in the hereafter. And in the process, Allah blesses the believers with the best of this life and the best of the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين